I have got in front of me none other than Dr. Bill Pettit. Bill is a colleague of mine. Bill has been a mentor of mine since I came across the Three Principles Understanding. I was so pleased when Bill said yes to being a speaker and being part of this Beyond Diagnosis program. So welcome, Bill. I'm so excited to have this very short chat with you today. Thank you, Rainy. It's a pleasure. Pleasure. I have said this to you in my email, and I keep saying this because there's one of your quotes that I absolutely love. And, you know, in my previous office, I had written it on the whiteboard. Everything else would be like erased, but that one will always stay. And people would come to my office and they would look at the quote. And the quote was this, diagnostic labels are a description of where you are, not who you are. You are so wise and you have said so many different things, but for some reason, as a psychiatrist, this just like, oh my goodness, no one ever has explained it so well. So can you say something about this and, and why you said that? Yeah, it's it's where you are and not who you are, you know, yeah. Um, you know, here, here's what comes to mind that the other thing that I feel comfortable saying and is on my website, you're never broken, never broken, can't be broken, never and nothing lacking, nothing lacking. And, and that there's just one cause of all mental distress and illness. And there's one cure. And it's peace of mind. And the cause is mental stress. Without getting too scientific, most people know, Rainey, about the stress response. And the stress response is the body's response that is meant to in life-threatening situations, right? I remember one time in Florida when I was there, a lady, they actually had alligators in the water holes. Right. And she had two small children. And one of them, first of all, everything works out okay. So people get scared. One of the small children fell into the water hole and she looked down and the alligator had her 18-month-old in its mouth. That's what this system is built for. She jumped into the, the water. She slammed her fist as hard as she could on the alligator's nose. It opened its mouth. She grabbed her child and then she got out of the water. <laughs> now, that's what that system is made for. But for the first, from age 20 to age 40, I used that six to nine hours a day I activated that same system by worry. What if, what if, what if, by guilt, beating myself up for mistakes that I had made and things I had done that were hurtful to people. Resentment, holding, getting, thinking about how angry I was and not forgiving somebody that had done something to me. Being driven to try to prove myself spending hours a day in analytical thinking, trying to figure out things. And then I wondered why I went in and out of clinical depression for nearly 20 years. I did. I never had to be hospitalized. I saw six different psychiatrists. And they were good people. And they helped me through these situations to where I didn't have to stop schooling. I didn't have to stop my profession. And I would eventually come out of my depression because I quit thinking about it <laughs> and got back in my life. But they never, no one ever taught me how to be at peace. So when I met Mr. Banks in 1983, and I, I would encourage anybody that listens to this to go to www.sidbanks.com and listen to the first Long Beach lecture called The Great Illusion. As I sat and listened to Mr. Banks in 1983 on April Fool's Day, I felt a hope inside that a realization that I was healthy inside, but for what I was doing with my thinking that metaphorically, I was spending six to nine hours a day 
worry, guilt, resentment, overanalysis, upset, and then wondering why I had a headache on the right side of my head. <laughs> I do that graphically because I think people can see that my depression was actually a love letter trying to let me know that I was innocently lowering my mood by what I was doing with this incredible gift of thought. And, and I didn't know that there was another resource, if you will, a spiritual resource. And I, I don't care what, what religious, what culture, we're all made of the same energy, every one of us. And we all have access to a wisdom that's beyond our intellect. Everyone that here is hearing this little interview, I'll bet has had moments in their life where they either gave up their analytical thinking or they took a nap or something got them into the present moment and their analytical thinking cleared and the answer came to them that they were looking for. <laughs> and to start to know on that day in 1983, I came to start to know that there was a resource that nobody had ever told me about, that there was a wisdom-based guidance system inside of me, that when I had the courage to and the humility to say, you know, I don't know what to do here, and my analytical thinking is not going to help me. <laughs> I'm just going to do the best I can to be in the present moment, as best as I can. And answers started coming to me from that place. And so I think you could have labeled me as a depressive <laughs> 20, 40 years ago, because I was going in and out of clinical depression all the time. But it wasn't who I was. I thought it was because of my genetics and my hereditary that depression was on both sides. I had a suicide on both sides of my family, alcoholism. But, but those were not, that was just where those people were in their level of understanding. And there's no judgment, no judgment on me. Until I met Mr. Banks, I didn't know that there was a different direction to look. So I, I got wordy there. I know I always do. But I guess, yeah. It, that's really true for me that that any label, any diagnosis, in fact, on my website, and I think you have the new website, drdrbillpettit.com, I would encourage you to have people look at that, at the resources, which is also on Elizabeth Lovius's website, but there's 12 or 13 interviews, there's stories of hope of people from every diagnostic category that once they got peace of mind, their diagnosis melted away like snow, a snowball in summer. They're called stories of hope. And because every diagnosis is just where the person is, the anxiety is an alarm system trying to get people to look in a different direction. The mood going down is a love letter trying to alarm system trying to let us know to look in a different direction. The muddled thinking, the urgency, the urgency to use a drug or alcohol to, to deaden our thinking so it doesn't hurt us so much is where we are in our understanding. If we don't know that we're a spiritual energy in a physical form, we take our thoughts way too seriously. And then we wonder why we lose our peace of mind. Mm. Anyway, <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. This is so beautiful. I love that, what you said about diagnosis melting away when we find that peace. That, that's just beautiful. And that's what we mean by beyond the diagnosis. You know, diagnosis has this place to communicate between one another, but people can also feel stuck because they think who they are is this diagnosis. And so I love your quote, love, love your quote, because it clearly says this is not who you are, but where you are. And that's a very important distinction that most people don't see. It is. It is. And and I know you've worked a lot with the idea of the psychiatric medications. And people would ask me, they say, well, are you against medications? I say, well, if somebody's having so much anxiety that they're going in and out of chronic constant panic attacks, I, I used high doses of anti-anxiety medicine 
to get them calm enough to where they could listen, <laughs> where they could watch some of Mr. Banks's videos, where they could read some of his books, where they could listen to me. If somebody is, is being terrified by thoughts of suicide, I actually did electroconvulsive therapy. If that's what it took to get them to, to feel some freedom from suicidal thoughts until they could understand what a suicidal thought was and not be frightened by it. But what I came to see is medicines and organic therapies as useful sometimes to give people a window of opportunity to hear something. Mm -hmm. But as a long-term solution, they start causing more problems than they do than they do solutions. We've talked about probably the book um, Anatomy of an Epidemic by Robert Whitaker, because the countries that have been able to only use antipsychotics even for the first few six weeks, they have up to 45% complete cures from schizophrenia, whereas countries like the United States and a lot of Europe that gives these for years and years has like a 6%. <laughs> So they have seven and 800% higher cure rates and 75% of the people with that label are fully employed. And in the United States, it's like 10 to 12%. Mm -hmm. So I'm not anti, it's misused. It's like the stress response. The stress mm -hmm. response can be used to save a person's life or somebody else's life, mm -hmm. but you don't want it activated all the time. We pay an incredible price with autoimmune diseases, with all kinds of 80 to 110 physical diseases are related to chronic infl systemic inflammation in the body and the inflammatory cytokines that, that are activated when we activate the stress response with our thinking. And a very simple thing, and, and it's typical, it's hard to talk about because if people don't know there's an alternative, it seems like you're blaming them. I'm not blaming anybody. I don't blame myself. But I ask people a simple question. Of your waking hours, how many of those hours are you at a quiet peace? Because if we're not at a quiet peace, we're probably activating the stress response. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. We had just this few minutes of conversation and it's fascinating when people become part of this program. Bill is only one of the speakers. We have got four other amazing speakers. Bill is coming twice actually. So we'll have four hours of this conversation with Bill about beyond diagnosis, but from a psychiatrist point of view. And I can't thank you enough, Bill. I'm so, so excited yeah. and I'm super excited that you are going to be one of the speakers. I think the people, the participants are in for a trade. Honestly, I think so, because it's not just like a little bit of this experience, it's the whole like 12 months of this experience. So thank you, Bill. Thank you from my heart. Oh, you're very, very welcome. And I hope that maybe people would be willing to take a look at the, uh, the first 16 minutes of that video by Mr. Banks called The Great Illusion that you could give them reference yeah, to because, I'll give the link. because they'll either say, I don't, you know, I'm not interested, or they'll say, I don't know what he was talking about, but he touched a place inside of me. You yeah. know, we all know when we hear truth, don't we, Rainy? Yeah. So I will give that link. Thank you so much for reminding me to do that. Thank you, Bill. You're welcome.